Hi everyone. When parts have been machined, there often remains a flash of material on the edges of parts and components. These flashes of material we call burrs. Even when all machining toolpaths have been completed, a part can only be considered shippable when the deburring process has been completed. Whilst deburring is essential, it's a labor intensive process that can be very time consuming. The Deburr Toolpath in Fusion 360 specifically aims to address this by automatically detecting all of the external sharp edges and removing all burrs across the entirety of the part. The Deburr Toolpath is three, four, and five axis capable. So it's super versatile in helping to eliminate those labor intensive manual deburring tasks, saving you time, money, and a lot of frustration. This toolpath automatically identifies external corners where burrs are likely to occur and removes a very small, user-controlled amount of material from the edge to remove any remaining burrs. The toolpath runs along the edge just enough so that the sharp burrs are removed and the manual processing of deburring afterwards is eliminated or significantly reduced. As part of this tutorial, I'll walk you through how to use it and throw in some pro tips along the way. Let's jump straight in. First off, within the manufacturer workspace with the machining extension enabled, from the 3D drop-down menu, select Deburr. To create your first Deburr toolpath, it's important to understand what tool geometries are supported and how they are supported. All tools, including ball noses, lollipop tools, chamfer tools, spot drills, flat end mills, and taper tools are supported within Deburr. However, some tools require additional considerations. The first consideration is that spot drills are supported in three, four, and five axis. However, you will need to enable the cut at fixed point on the tool option in the multi-axis tab in order to use them. The second consideration is also that when deburring with an end mill, the side portion of the tool is used to deburr edges. So you'll need to turn on the five axis mode. And again, like for spot drills, you'll need to check the cut at fixed point on the tool in order to use end mills to deburr your parts. Moving on to the geometry tab, we will need to define how we want the toolpath to identify the edges. Automatic interrogates the entirety of the model's geometry and will attempt to machine all of the external edges whilst avoiding tool holder collisions and respecting the axis limits of your machine tool. Selection will limit the toolpath to just the user-defined edges specified. Notice that the automatic option has additional capability to allow you to exclude additional edges, which may be too close to things like fixtures or clamps. And thus, there may be a requirement to avoid machining a particular edge. A pro tip here is that even when you have navigated away from the geometry tab, Right-clicking the toolpath within the browser allows you to quick select further selections or edges to exclude depending on whether you have selection or automatic enabled. Minimum edge angle is generally used to automatically filter out any significantly obtuse edges from detection. This effectively acts in the same way as the bitangency angle in pencil toolpath or the threshold angle within steep and shallow, whereby an edge with an angle less than the user-defined value will simply be ignored. In the example on screen, the edge in question has a draft angle of 12 degrees from the horizontal face the edge is connected to. To stop this edge being detected and subsequently deburred, adjust the minimum edge angle to be more than the draft angle of the edges being deburred, which, in this case means adjusting the angle to 15 degrees. Notice how it's not included anymore. Generally speaking, the more obtuse an angle is, i.e. closer to 180 degrees, the less of a burr is created and the less of a requirement there is to deburr it.
Moving on to the Passes tab. Edges can be deburred in one of two ways, either by chamfering or by filleting. When using the chamfering option, the tool runs along the edge in such a way so as to approximate a chamfered edge. Filleting should be used with the multiple passes checkbox option and runs the tool in such a way so that the final edge appears filleted. The edge shape defines how much material will be removed from the edge during the deburring process. With constant width, the width of the chamfer will always be the same for each edge. However, the depth of cut may vary depending on the geometry being machined in order to maintain that constant width. With constant depth, the opposite is true. Where the depth of the chamfer being created will remain the same for each edge, however, the width of the chamfer may vary depending on the geometry being machined in order to maintain that constant depth. The deburr toolpath is also suitable for deburring corner regions between edges. In situations like on the screen, I have some corners which I'd like to deburr, but because of the nature of the geometry of the tool, the corners are just not accessible. The deburr strategy moves the tool to the next edge after it can no longer machine any more of the current edges as a result, some burrs may remain on some of the corner areas. However, there is an elegant solution to overcome this. The user can simply enable cut with tip of tool checkbox, which attempts to cut more of the corner by using more of the tip of the tool. In doing so, removes as much of the remaining burr as possible. Again, notice how the burr has now largely been removed. The drawback here is that a less smooth machine motion can occur as a direct result of the sharp changes in direction of the toolpath. This is not a problem for today's modern controllers, but not great for older generation controllers which can lead to jittery and stuttering machine motion. To make machine motion smoother, tick the Add Loops for Smooth Motion checkbox. This has the benefit of adding in smoother motion control when the tool transitions between edges by way of circular loops. It's worth noting that the loops are offset away from the surface so as to avoid touching the surface and marking the part in areas where we are trying to deburr, ensuring a superior surface finish continues to remain from the adjoining surfaces already finished. Lastly, we have the multi-axis tab. In many circumstances, we may need to invoke multi-axis capabilities in order to provide the tool with more accessibility to deburr as much of the part as possible in one go. Selecting three axis will only machine edges that it can physically reach, whilst four axis is really suitable for situations where you have a rotary style part that needs to be deburred using the addition of a rotary axis. In four axis mode, the primary method of tilting can be defined as either two rotary axis or zero lead angle. Two rotary axis means that the tool tip will always be pointing to the defined rotary axis. This is ideal for turn mill machines with no B axis. Applying a further tilt angle will tilt the tool towards the rotary axis. Again, this is ideal for a turn mill machine that does have a B axis. This works slightly differently with zero lead angle, which aligns the tool with the average angle of the two edges being machined. Applying a further tilt on top of zero lead angle, as is the case with the two rotary axis option, will then additionally tilt the tool towards the rotary axis. Let's take a closer look at the five axis settings. Primary mode, as in the four axis variation, describes the movements of the tool as and when multi-axis motion occurs. Using a lead angle may be appropriate for situations where you want a small lead angle to get a better surface finish by cutting with the leading edge of the tool, whilst tilt to Z axis will tilt the tool to a preferred angle and or to adjust that angle when a collision is detected. When a collision is no longer detected, the tool will revert back to the preferred angle. A pro tip here 
is that setting the preferred tool axis to zero will effectively maintain a vertical tool axis or three axis toolpath, whilst only tilting the tool to avoid collisions as and when the toolpath detects a state of collision. Lastly, in order to maximize machine motion smoothness when the deburr toolpath is being used, it's advisable to set the high feed rate mode within the linking tab to always use high feed. This typically will make linking move smoother and will mean your machine axis will remain synchronized as it traverses to its next orientation. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, users have flexibility about what portion of the tool is used for deburring. This is crucial when using tools such as end mills and tapered cutters, where the user may want to use a specific point on the side of the tool. Enabling cut at fixed point on tool defines where the tool contacts the edge to be deburred. The larger the percentage, the further up the tool towards the holder of the flute that point on the tool gets used. This is often useful when specifying areas on your tool to use that may have experienced the least wear and therefore provide the best cutting conditions to deburr your part. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please refer back to the Fusion 360 self-paced learning for additional information and don't forget to check into our social media pages for all the latest features and content. From me, cheers.